Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward, and I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 26. Ye shall. I notice this chapter doesn't start with an and. All of them been one complete book. Finish the chapter and. Next start of chapter and. Ye shall make you no idols, nor a graven image. You would think religions would get that, wouldn't you? Isn't that plain and simple? If you were to take a kindergarten and explain to them what an idol is and an image. And then say to him what God just said here. You think, you know, okay, get rid of it. Neither rear you a, a standing tree. I mean, sorry, uh, a standing image to put up. A tree is an image. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land. How about statues that are stone and marble? And as a Christian nation that we proclaim to be, and we got stone monuments, and you go up north, you've got four faces of presidents who are dead of stone. And then you wonder why God's not blessing this nation. We read last night, uh, the chapter 25, verse 10, the markings of the Liberty Bell bell and yet we go one more chapter into it and we've got idols and imagery they're all over and people go and take pictures of them buy souvenirs and God says no and bow down unto it for I am the Lord your God worshiping it and the worship the bowing down doesn't mean you just have to get down on your knees and say old stone statue, old stone statue. Is you plan your whole year, you plan your whole budget, you plan everything just to go to see that one thing. And then you skip church on Sunday morning, you skip midweek service. I'm always amazed how when a Christian puts forth their vacation, it's always they're never there on Sunday morning. They're never there on Sunday night. That begins their vacation. That's a little thing of me, but if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, this is to the Jews, this is the law, then I, God, will give you rain in due season. That didn't come from the meteorologist? That doesn't come from, you mean God gives rain? And yet we keep on giving the credit to Mother Nature. And again, you wonder why God is angry with this nation. We got stone monuments and we don't give God the credit for the for the weather. The weather forecast is saying it was, it was going to be a nice day today. How about God's is giving us a nice day? And the land shall yield her increase. You mean it's not the grocery store? It is God that puts the food in your pantries or the restaurant. And the one day that this nation, as a Christian nation, gives thanks to God has completely blown out the window of football and going out and spending money that you don't have. Thanksgiving is the time to thank God for what we got, and Christmas is to complain and gripe and, and to worship the things we ain't got. And the trees of the field 
shall yield their fruit. So on the basis of the law for a Jew in the land, if you obey everything I tell you to do, I will give you the rain and I'll give you fruit. And we read that last night's chapter. God says at the seven years, the land is to rest. But in the six years, I will give you the fruit of three years. And that's all conditional upon them obeying the law. Your threshing, this is all about your harvest, shall reach unto the vintage. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, complete mass of fruit. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. So your tellmies are going to be satisfied. I will give peace in the land. You shall lie down. And none shall make you afraid. I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. There will be no war. Peace. It's not going on today. Man, they're walking around with guns strapped to them. There is no peace. The United Nations keeps trying to shut them out. The United Nations only recognize uh, Jerusalem. They will have missiles flying over them from, from the, the enemy. There are bombs going off. You shall chase your enemies. That's not today. The enemies are dwelling in the land. With them. And they shall fall before you by sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred. Imagine five men chasing a hundred men. And a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. The small minority that you are, you're going to conquer armies, is what God said. If you keep the law, if you obey what I tell you to do. And your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. War. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, children, and multiply you, more and more children, and establish my covenant with you that he established Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now he'll give it to the Israelites. You shall eat of you shall eat old store. Again, we read that in chapter 25, verses 19, 21, and 22. That seven year rest, again, the six year is going to give fruit for three years. And bring forth the old because of the new. I will set my tabernacle amongst you, the, the, the temple, and my soul, God's soul, God has an eternal soul. That's God speaking. God is eternal. And shall not abhor you. I, I'm not going to extremely hate you if you keep my commandments. I will walk amongst you and will be your God. And ye shall be my people, Israelites, not Americans. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. So we, who we know who we're talking about here, that ye should not be their bondmen. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. So here's, if you obey, 13 verses. If you obey, if you do right, no graven images, you follow the law. 14 to 46, man, if you don't do it. Now, America is not under the law, but we're going to see some things here in America. That, because, listen, God has done this to the Jew in Babylon. Jeremiah, Ezekiel. God has done this since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ of the Jews. And to today. But he's not finished with them. And if the Jews are doing these sins. And God has chastised his children. And you've got foreign people. Gentiles. Opposite of Jews. And they're doing the same things. God must judge them. As he judges his own. Now judgment begins. At, 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 the, at God's people. The Bible says. But it's going to reach out to those who are not God's people. And if God will not judge nations as wicked as Judah was, and then he's going to apologize to Judah. And God's not going to apologize for judgment upon sin. 
So when we see, we're going to see Israel and Judah going to Babylon. We're going to see them rejecting their Messiah and God putting them on the shelf. And we're going to see other nations that have rejected God and their judgment placed by God. But, now, let's go to Exodus 19.8 real quick. And let's see this demand that the Jews, Exodus 19.8. And remember the law didn't come to Exodus 20. But 19.8. And if you vow a vow unto God, you better not slack the bacon to, to uh, do it. And all the people who answered again and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And you notice the do's that we did here. Do is a good word to mark in your Bible. Now, Exodus 19, Exodus 20, and through Leviticus and all that. The Jews had not learned what God truly was going to have for them. But beforehand, we will do everything you say. Everything you have spoken, okay? Leviticus 26. Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to 26. Deuteronomy. You have not done, when we get to Jeremiah, you have not done what God has told you to do. Judgment. Leviticus 26, 14. You are not going to do what God has told you to do. Judgment. You said it, but if we, if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor hate, stream hatred, my judgments. This is where Jeremiah is going to come in when you study Jeremiah, so that ye will not do. All my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. So you're not going to do what I told you to do. Okay. Verse 16. I, God, also will do this unto you. Here we go. I will even appoint over you terror. We are now in the land of terrorists. Why? Because we're not doing what God told you to do. What's God told us to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But well, we got all kinds of religions. We got all kinds of science. We got all kinds of education. We don't have Jesus Christ. Okay, fine. Tara, you're going to be afraid to walk anywhere in America without worrying about somebody's going to pull a gun and start shooting. We're there. It's happening in Israel today. They're carrying guns. It's happening in England. Terrorists are arising. Consumption and a burning ague. Ague. That is a cold fit. Whereof will precede a fever. So this is like flu kind of sickness. Burning. Not just a fever, but a burning. That should consume the eyes. So here's a disease of the eyes. And cause sorrow of heart. You shall sow your seed in vain. Emptiness. Put your seed out there. You ain't going to do nothing. For your enemy shall eat it. <clears throat> you know where most American food go today? Our great friendly people out there worldwide. Who just love Americans. Ask your soldiers, ask your military personnel how everybody in the world feels about Americans. I will set my face against you. That's not good. And ye shall be slain, killed, before your enemies in war. Take that peace time away. Babylon came and destroyed them by war three times. Nebuchadnezzar came in. That they, they that hate you, your enemies, shall reign over you. Rome when Jesus Christ comes. We had a president that everybody hated for eight years. We got another president now that's hated by other people. 
There it is. And as far as my view, I don't care about any of the presidents. I pray for them. I send them a letter of witness. I don't care who's in the office. I pray. I worry about what the Bible says for me to do. Shall reign over you. Ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Now imagine. Here's a guy. He's running down the sidewalk. He's to, hey, what are you fleeing from? Nothing. Her, I got to go. Isn't that silly? And yet, we are in an age of, in this country, of all kinds of pills and medication and pharmacies for every ailment you got that people are just afraid of. America's living in terror, living in fear and anxiety. And if he, okay, 18. You didn't get right after 17, 18. And if you will not yet for all these hearken unto me, God, then I will punish you seven times more for your sin. This is to the Jew. These are God's people. This is the one that God says, here is the law. Here is what you're supposed to do. It is spelled out. Moses wrote it down. If you're not going to do it, you're in trouble. Say, oh, phew, I'm glad in the church age we're safe. Oh, thank God I'm not under the law. We got a King James 611 Bible written from Genesis to Revelation. We know it ought to be done. We have something that Jeremiah didn't have. We have something that Jesus didn't even have. We have something that Paul did not have. The entire complete Bible written to us. You know what's coming next after the church age is gone? The Great Tribulation. Seven years. You better get right. You better believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Seven times more for your sins. In addition to uh, 14 to 17. And I will break the pride of your power. There's America. I'm proud to be American. Made in America. Made in the USA. And all those other stupid country songs. America's pride. You know that was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. The pride. Abundance of bread. And entertainment and fun. You know what the Jews were pride, pride of when Jesus came? Abraham our father. He kept telling you ain't like Abraham. You're a complete opposite from Yeah, you may be of the bloodline of Abraham, but you ain't like him. I will make your heaven as iron, no rain. And your earth as brass, no crops. Whereas in the beginning of this chapter, I'll give you rain, I'll give you crops. You don't listen to me, I'll cut the rain, I'll cut the crops. And your strength. So everything today is strength, lift weights. Take these pills and you'll get good muscles. And your strength shall be spent in vain. It could be no avail. It could be no good. For your land, that's the Jewish heaven. That's what the Jewish people want. They want the land. Shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. The blessing, if you did right, man, I'll give you all kinds of fruit. I will give you in that six years, I'll give you three years of fruit. Not if you do right. Economists say, and I'm very good on this, on what I've read and, and heard and studied. The first depression in America was there was no money, but there was food. They're saying, not if, but when that next depression for America comes, there's going to be no food but plenty of money. Now, you're not going to make a salad, or you can try to make a salad of a dollar bill, but that ain't going to be too tasty. Now, that's what economists say. That may be falling in the line of God going against Jesus Christ. All right? You haven't got right yet. 21. And if you walk contrary to me and will not hearken unto me, God, I will bring seven times more plagues. It's going to get worse and worse. 
upon you according to your sins. And this is for the Jews and this is for nations. Look at nations that had, had cursed Israel where they stand. Look at nations who you know just went into sin and defiled God in the Bible where they stand. Look at England. England is the predecessor of what America will be tomorrow at the Lord's area. I will also send wild beasts. I got a mark here, 1 Kings 13, 24. I watch the people's court and judge Judy as far as law and learning law for, for small claims courts. As far as law information that program, you know how many cases there are for, for animals, dogs? And you ever hear these people say, hey, yeah, I saw a bear in my backyard. I saw a wolf come down from the mountains in the back. And we're seeing animals that we've never seen before. And what they're saying is, you know, man is reaching out in this habitat. He's stretching out to the animal kingdom. That's a bunch of crock. You're going against God in the Bible. You're going against Jesus Christ. And God said, I'll bring those animals. among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways that's the, that's the main roads shall be desolate it's going to be a, a complete population drop because of the animals you read revelation about those animals that are going to come out You haven't got right yet? Three times. You figure by now you get right. And if you will not be reformed, corrected, or amended by me, by these things, chapter uh, verses 14 to 22, but will walk contrary to me. If you continue to go in rebellion, then will I walk contrary to you. I'm going to go against you. And will punish you yet seven times for your sin. Uh, we're getting 14 times, 21 times more now. This is serious. Sin is serious business whether you be an Israelite or you be a Gentile. Sin is serious. Now, can you really read what we're reading now and say, well, God love, hates to sin but loves the sinner? Can you really say that? And yet the long-suffering of God with this chapter is, I'm trying to get you right. I am putting these things on you that you will turn to me. But you won't. And I will bring a sword, war, upon you. That shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities. Massed together. I will send the pestilence among you. Diseases. Just like he did with Egypt. Egypt would not get right. Pharaoh would not get right. He kept sending wonders and signs. Wonders and signs. Finally Pharaoh died and went to hell. And ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy, Babylon, Rome. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, no food, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. And they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. And you shall eat and not be satisfied. You can only have a certain por portion of bread amount of time. You can only have this amount. You got ten women that's in your kitchen on one oven making bread, but you can only have this amount. Something happens to the bread when it's being baked and when it's being prepared. You can't have all that bread that's being prepared. It's moldy. It's not good. Haven't got right yet. If you will not for all this hearken unto me, God, but walk contrary unto me. I will walk contrary unto you. Also in fury, God is getting angrier. God's long-suffering. And I, even I, will chasten you seven times. I lost count now. For your sins. 
God wants them to get right. God wants you to get right. God will send things in your life for you to get right. He wanted Pharaoh to get right and do right. But the hard, the pride, man will not listen to God. Then I will walk contrary unto you, also in fury. I, even I, will chasten you seven times for your sin. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons. And they will in Jeremiah's time. 2 Kings 6, 28 and 29. Lamentations. And the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. You really think, you know, you really think it has to get that hard? You really think God means business with sin when you take your child and you kill them and you boil them? There was a king of Judah, and they came to him and said, "You know, we ate her door. He ate, we ate her son yesterday. I mean, we ate my son today. Now I said, where's your son?" And she went and hit him. And I'm hungry. King, will you have her bring her child so we can eat him? I will destroy your high places. This is all prophecy. They're not even in the land yet. And God said, I'll destroy your high place. And in the land, there are high places. There are high places all in America. Especially in Washington, D.C. And cut down your images. There's images all across from, from ocean to ocean. And cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. And this will happen in Jeremiah's time. Je Ezekiel will write after this has happened. Jeremiah writes as Babylon is attacking. And Ezekiel will write after Babylon has attacked. And I will make your cities waste. Jeremiah will describe that in the book of Lamentations. And bring your sanctuaries into desolation. Notice it's sanctuaries plural. Churches and temples and tabernacles and whatever kind of religious buildings and religious places are all on America will be desolate. I will not smell of your savior of your sweet odor. They're coming to the temple. They're bringing their incense. They're bringing their animals. They're doing the sacrifice and God says it stinks. To find that, read the book of Malachi. See, we're reading something that God has warned the Jews and the Jews do not take heed. And when we preach the gospel to people, we tell them that there's a hell. We tell them that death is coming and they will not take heed. They will end up in those flames for all eternity. God is right. God is always right. So have you got right yet? I will bring the land into desolation, emptiness. And your enemies which dwell therein shall be stunned. They will be, wow, look what God has done to his people. I will scatter you among the heathen. They're all over the world today. And there are some countries that don't even want them. Get out of here. Uh, I think Luke. Even the Gospels, it talks about Paul meets Priscilla and Aquila. They left their country because their country said, get out of here. I will scatter you among the heathen. And will draw out a sword after you. War. Out of Hitler. The Roman Catholic Church. Your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath. Remember I told you about that last night? That Sabbath? Seven day rest. That one day rest. Enjoy it. The seventh year rest. Enjoy that year of rest. The 49th and 50th year of Jubal. Enjoy it. They did not enjoy it. They did not hearken to God. And God says that land needs rest. And if you will not give you that rest to that land, I will take you out of that land. And I will give that land rest by force. What do you think America is doing with her land? Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath. It will enjoy it if you're not there. As long as it lies desolate. And you will be in your enemy's Babylon land Germany Poland America even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate 
it shall rest. You're not supposed to. All you do is and just obey that time of rest. Things would have been okay. Because it did not rest in your Sabbath. It did not rest in your Sabbath. They weren't obeying the Sabbath. When you dwell upon it. It's either Ezra or Nehemiah. They, they're, they're showing up on the Sabbath to buy things. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bash you guys. I'm going to pull your hair out. I'm shutting those doors. You're not to be here. You come back next Sabbath. I'm, you're going to have to deal with me. Why was, I, and I forget, I think it's Nehemiah. Let me say Nehemiah. Why was Nehemiah so mad that people were showing up on the Sabbath? Because he knew this prophecy and he knew that was one of the reasons why God said, You're gone. And upon them that are left alive of you, all right, we survive. Oh, I will send faintness into their hearts. Oh, anxiety, weakness in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. A leaf is going to shake. Ah, what was that? And they shall flee as fleeing from a sword. And they shall fall when none pursue it. Can you imagine what Jews felt like during World War II when Adolf Hitler was still alive? Can you even picture what this verse says? Let's say something. I think the Nazis are coming. What do you think those Jews would have done if they even thought the SS troops were coming? Wouldn't that bring a panic and a scare and a run? Even though if it was a rumor? And they shall fall one upon another. The train cars are bringing them to the to the consecration camps, and in the, the the crematoriums, they say they were all piled on top of each other, and they would have the babies in the mother's arms just to give them enough air to survive a little longer. You better believe the Bible's right, and the history proves that God is right, and they don't want God to be right, so they're changing history. We are reading about Babylon. We are reading about Adolf Hitler. We're going to read about the Antichrist and those Jews. That Antichrist is going to hunt those Jews. He's going to cut off their heads and he's going to drink of their blood. There's a church facility called today the Catholic Church that proclaims to drink the Jewish blood of Jesus Christ. Who is a literal blood. You better not be fooled. You better speak up and preach the Bible the way it is. Because it's yet yeah, prophecy and it's history. You are reading the account of World War II. I guarantee you, if any rumor comes through that those troops were coming in, those Jews would be scared and petrified. Flee from the sword and they shall fall when none pursue it. Taking their own life. And they shall fall one upon another as if it were before a sword. Again, the gases. The gas is not a sword, but they fell and died. When none pursueth. They didn't pers Man, they marched them. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. World War II. And guarantee probably under Babylon too. And ye shall perish among the heathen, Gentiles, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you, <laughs> we just saw verse 10, and upon them that which are left alive, and you survive all this, and ye that are left, very small raiment left, shall pine away in their iniquity. They're not getting right. In your enemy's lands, Babylon. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. And if they confess their iniquity, finally. 14 to 39. Six chastisements. Very severe judgment of God upon sin. If, if, conditional. You know how many Jews died under the consecration camps of Adolf Hitler and still went off into hell? They would not repent and get right. 
many go the broad way. I hope there was somebody faithful there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would assume that God would send somebody. If they shall confess their iniquity, their iniquity, and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass, they trespassed, they went against God's way, which they trespassed against me, God speaking, and that also they have walked contrary to me. You are not walking right with me. So don't tell me in the church, hey, just say this prayer and you're okay. Not as severe as the sin is here. Not going to get through. You got to repent of your heart by the word of God being preached that Jesus saves and only Jesus by the blood of the Lamb which take away the sin of the world. And that, also, and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. Look at God. He's saying his part. You guys sin, and because of your sin, I left you. If then they will... If then their uncircumcised heart be humble, the uncircumcised heart, not another part of the body, the heart. With the heart, man believes on the righteousness. Not just the mouth. Mouth is confession. I said a prayer. This may, that may not be heart. If the heart be humble, they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Ezekiel, Jer Lord God, we deserve what happened to you. Daniel, Lord God, we've done wrong against you. And we're rightly placed where we are because of our sins. Daniel's after. Then will I remember the covenant of J with Jacob. And also the covenant with Isaac. With the covenant of Abraham. No Isaac at all. Will I remember? I will remember the land. See, there's their heaven. That's the Jewish heaven, the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbath. You didn't enjoy the Sabbath. You didn't have the Sabbath. Well, get out of here. Now it's enjoying it. While she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept the punishment of their iniquity. Daniel did. Because even because they despised my judgment, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the lander and enemies, Daniel, I will not cast them away, Ezekiel. Neither will I abhor, abhor them, to destroy them utterly, to break my covenant with them. I am the Lord. Their God. So does that sound like God could totally finish with the Jew? Absolutely not. Anybody who says that is cursing those people. Get away from them. Get out of their church. Have no being with them at all. What God has been doing to them from chapter 14, verses 39, 41, he wants them to get right. And Jesus told us many will go the broad way. But he's looking for that very few of the raiment to get right. And when Jesus comes back at the second advent, he will find a remnant of the remnant of those Jews. And for those Jews, are we coming back to rescue? Joel chapter 2. And to set up that millennial kingdom where there will be a temple, where they will be in their land. And the United Nations will have nothing to say. Their Arabians will have no more fighting. Israelites won't be here no more. They'll be off into hell burning. But that Jew will be settled in the land with Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews, not the church. With David, their prince, and the Levites offering the temple sacrifices of the sweet smell that that's the way God wanted it to be. And yet for that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, to break my covenant with them. I am the Lord their God. God's never finished with those Jews. God is not completely ever get out of my face. He loves them. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, uh, Egyptians, and all the people that have been in the land, the wilderness, and in the promised land, that I might be their God, I am the Lord. These are the statutes and the judgments of the law which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses 
which began in Exodus 19. See, Leviticus, we're still at Mount Sinai in Exodus 20. Moses is going to get, go up. He's going to get this all written down. And pray for the Jews. Pray for 